So one of the common questions that we get on a lot of our e-transit videos is people want to know what's under the hood of the e-transit. Since it doesn't have an engine, what's actually in there? So we figured we'd make a pretty quick video for you guys and show you exactly what's under the hood. We'll also show you the battery pack and the motor and rear diff, so to speak, that's under the back of it. Come along and check it out. It's pretty cool. There's actually a fair amount of stuff under the hood. It's not like this thing has a frunk or a front trunk or anything else. You can't really use this space for anything. It is very much that Ford stuck an EV platform in their exact transit chassis. In doing that, they wanted to try to retain as many of the normal air conditioning and heater components as possible and power steering and all of that kind of stuff. You've got uh, over here on the left side or the passenger side of the bay, you've got a electrically powered air conditioning compressor. Through everything else you see in here, you've got a series of heating elements. A standard gas vehicle gets its cabin heat from the hot liquid flowing around the engine. Well, since we don't have hot liquid flowing around an engine, we have to make our own hot liquid. There is a reservoir of coolant. That coolant will also cool the batteries, but it will also heat the batteries as well and they've got some heating elements in there so that provides our cabin heat. One of the neat things about the e-transit is you can set departure times and arrival times on on your uh, comfort cabin and comfort control settings. So like if you leave your house every day at eight o'clock, you can have this thing set to where at eight o'clock, the cabin is the appropriate temperature. Because it knows you're leaving at eight, it will also heat or cool the batteries so that they are ready for you to leave at eight o'clock. It depends on your weather, right? If it's right now today, it's like 105 degrees outside. And so today would be a cooling day. If it were only five degrees outside, it would be a heating day. When you are plugged into your charger, and all of that stuff is going on. It's using shore power to do all of that. That way you're using shore power to heat the cabin and heat the batteries or cool the cabin and cool the batteries. And you're not actually robbing your range and robbing your battery power to do it. One of the last things that you'll notice in here, and it is over here on the, the this contraption here, that is your actual charger. So whenever we talk about EVs and we talk about like, your charger that you're plugging it into the wall. The thing that you plug into the wall and plug into the front of the transit, it's really an intelligent extension cord. It's not really a charger. Basically, it provides power from your, your shore power to the e-transit. It also communicates to the e-transit how many amps of power you have plugged into. That's how the e-transit knows how fast it can charge. The charger is actually on board up underneath the hood. But if we plug into a standard 120 volt wall outlet, it's gonna read the amperage available and charge accordingly. And if I plug into my level two charger that I have at home, it knows that that's a 48 amp charger and it's going to charge accordingly. One last thing real quick, here in the charging door where we would charge everything, here is where the standard charger plugs in right here. If we're gonna be using a DC fast charger, it's a little bit bigger of a charger handle. If we're gonna be using one of those, we actually open another door, the DC fast charger will occupy the entire charging receptacle there. That's part of how the vehicle knows exactly what you're plugging into and how fast it can be charging. Let's show you the battery up underneath the van, and then we'll also show you the motor and rear differential and rear suspension. So here we are under the van. We've got our giant 68 amp hour battery taking up pretty much the whole under van area in between the front wheels and the back wheels. Some of the things you'll notice on the front end of the battery, we've got some coolant lines that are going in and out of the battery pack. Again, that helps preheat or pre-cool the battery. We've got our big electrical lines going in that are gonna be charging the battery and then also the electrical lines that are coming out of the battery and going to the motor. And then then we've got some smaller electrical lines and I'm no Ford engineer, but I can only assume 
those are giving you battery information and statistics as far as battery life remaining and battery temperatures for the computer to know if it needs to heat and cool the battery and everything else. Battery is about six or seven inches thick and it's gonna be about six feet long and about four and a half, five feet wide. That's pretty cool. Some other things that you'll notice on the e-transit, it's got some reinforced steel and aluminum beams down the side of it. I can only assume that's for crash impact resistance stuff. If the van were to get T-boned, it'll help protect the battery and lessen the likelihood of the battery getting damaged in, in a way that would create an added, an added danger. Let's roll on farther back behind the vehicle and we'll show you the electrical motor, the drive system, and uh, the independent rear suspension. Back here, we have our electric motor that's kind of housed up in this cradle assembly here. We've got a half shaft out of each side of the motor that goes to each rear wheel. We're still rear wheel drive. We are independent rear suspension on the E-Transit. There is no other transit out there that has independent rear suspension. Ford claims this is one of the beefiest independent rear suspensions ever created. And it stands to reason because it's still a 350 chassis. We've also got some coolant lines that are the shared coolant lines from the battery to the motor to help keep the motor under control. We do not have a transmission on the e-transit. It is direct drive. So as fast as you're going down the highway is as fast as the motor turns. I have a feeling that's why the e-transit is limited to 83 miles an hour. I think that's as fast as they want the motor spinning. Some other neat notable things happening back here. The whole electronic drive assembly is a cradle system that is bolted right into the standard transit it frame. We still have things back here like our spare tire perch where the normal spare tire would be if you had a conventional transit. We have the leaf spring perches where if we were a solid rear axle and on leaf springs, we would have those back here. All of that stuff is identical because they have removed all of that and they've packaged it in this nice cradle assembly and bolted it up into the back. All in all, it's pretty sweet how the thing works. It rides amazing too. I'm not gonna say it rides better than a standard transit, but you wouldn't notice any difference between the e-transit and a conventional transit with how it rides. It's sacrificing nothing Thing with it being an independent rear suspension vehicle. One of the other questions we've been asked on our e-transit is what's in the fuel door? Right here is where you would standard transit, you would fill it up with fuel, right? Let's show you what's in the fuel door. You actually don't have a fuel door on the e-transit. There's no way to open it. There's no nothing. So they've replaced the fuel door with just a fixed piece of plastic that just covers it up. That's kind of cool. You're not gonna catch it. It's not gonna accidentally open up and fall off on you. So that's uh, that's pretty neat. Since we're on the subject of spare tires, the spare tire on the E-Transit is actually located under the front of the vehicle. They had to move it from the back to the front to make room for the, the motor, obviously. It's kind of interesting. It's up onto the front and you actually access the spare tire to lower it and use it through the passenger side wheel well. That's what's under the trunk of an e-transit. Again, we like keeping you guys informed. If you guys have any other questions, just like we've answered some of the questions here with this video, feel free, comment down below whatever questions you have. We'd love to answer them for you. Also, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more of our continued real world updates with our e-transit and everything that we get to experience with it, you get to experience as well.